So for physics to describe waves, we need to have a mathematical description of what a wave is. And to do that, we need to come up with a new type of calculus. Now, the problem we have is that if we look at a simple oscillator, we have a single variable in that system. And when a physicist means a variable, it means something they can choose the value of. They can vary according to whatever they want to do with the system. So with an oscillator, our single variable was time. We could look at the position of the oscillator at any time we chose. With a wave, though, we have two variables. We can choose to look at the wave at any time, so time is going to be one of those variables. But a wave now, if we're talking a one-dimensional wave, has a physical length. And we can choose to look at any point along that length to see what the wave is doing. So we have two variables, x and t. So we're going to have a mathematical function that is a function of both x and t, and that is going to give us a problem when we come to differentiate it, because we don't know the value of the other variable. We can't just differentiate with respect to time because we don't know the value of x, and we don't know how to differentiate x. So to understand how we're going to deal with that, we, let's go back to the first thing we did when we first learned about differentials, and we used differentials to calculate the gradient of a curve. Now, when we've got a function with two variables, we've no longer got a curve, we've got a two-dimensional surface, and the easiest two-dimensional surface to visualize is a two-dimensional surface of the Earth. So let's have a look and see what gradient means when we consider a two-dimensional surface. So here we have a two-dimensional function. And so this is going to be a height map, which is a function of an x and a y position. So if we have y up here, we have x along here. And this is a map of the Yorkshire Dales, uh, not far from where I grew up. My grandparents had a, a house along here. So this is a very beautiful part of northern England. And this particular part is Swaledale, and you can see that it's a valley with the river Swale in the bottom, running from uh, Gunnerside down to uh, Low Row. And the contour lines are shown on this map. And you can now see the problem we have with defining a gradient for a function where we've got two variables. So we can pick any point. We're free to choose x and y to be any values we want. So we could start here, and we can say, well, what's the gradient at this point? Or we could pick here and say, what's the gradient at this point? Well, if we just use our normal differential, we can't just take an ordinary differential because we've got two variables. And the gradient of the function at this point is going to depend. Do we go down the hill, in which case it's going to be very steep? Or do we go along here? There's a footpath called the Corpse Way. Um, you could walk along here, and there'd be a practically no gradient at all. It'd be level. So we need to come up with a different way of defining the gradient. And importantly, for a two-dimensional function like this, we need to define the gradient as a vector. If I look at the gradient here, I can say that it's this direction, and it's going to be quite steep, so it's going to be quite large. If I look at it here, then I can say the gradient is going to be in this direction, and it's going to be a bit shallower. And if I picked, say, for example, uh, this point here, then the gradient would be in this direction, and it would be very shallow. So clearly here, we're going to have to define the gradient as a vector quantity. We can no longer think of the gradient as a, scale, as, as a single number as we did for a function with one single variable. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a point here on the edge of the valley. And what we want for a vector is we want two components. And so the two components, we want one going down here that's going to be in the y direction. And we want one component going here that's in the x direction. So how do we get the gradient at this point here? Well, what we're doing is we're changing the height. So this is the change in height with respect to the change in y right? Because we're only changing the y coordinate, and we're keeping x as constant. And then we want to take the limit as delta y goes to 0. So we want to encode all of this in a single differential. So we cannot write 
dh by dy because this would you know exclude this fact that we're keeping x constant as we move in this direction so we can't write it that way instead we write it this way we write it as a curly h by a curly y and we call this a partial derivative because we're only taking the rate of change of height with respect to y and if you want to this part is optional you can actually write in this bar and put x and so we're taking the rate of change of height with respect to y keeping x constant similarly for this line here we're going to write this as partial h by partial x because we're taking the rate of change of height as we move in this direction but we're keeping y now constant and so these are going to be very easy differentials to do because we're going to treat y as a constant when we're differentiating with, res with respect to x here and here we're going to treat x as a constant when we differentiate with respect to y and although we don't need it for this course, we can write this gradient with a sort of upside down uh, a triangle here. We can say that the gradient of, uh, the point of, of, of this function h, which gives us the height, is going to be partial h by partial x in the x direction and partial h by partial y in the y direction and that's how we define a gradient in more than one dimension but the key point is is that it's defined in terms of these partial derivatives so that's why partial derivatives are useful and let's have a look at uh, something a little bit closer to what we're going to be using it for in the course let's have a look at it when it comes to describing a wave so here we have a function that describes the displacement of some medium with a wave passing through it. And so psi here is our function, and it's a function of both position and time. So we've got two variables, just like we had when we were talking about the gradient of the hills. So what we've got here is we've got the displacement um, as a function of position for a fixed time. So the time here is fixed at t naught, and essentially this is sort of like using a camera to take a picture of the wave as it passes by. You've got a fixed time, the time when you took the picture, and you can see the displacement as a function of position. And for waves, we often want to know what the gradient of this is, because this gradient is related to the restoring force of the medium at this point. So the force usually depends on the, um, you know, how it's related depends on the type of wave, but often it's related to the gradient of this line. So we have the displacement varying with position x and we want the gradient so the gradient is going to be the rate of change of displacement with respect to x but now we have the time constant and so this is a partial derivative now for the plot on the bottom we've done something slightly different we've looked at how the um, displacement changes at a fixed point of the medium. So if you imagine this is a water wave, we've taken a fixed point on the ocean and we've plotted how the displacement of the water surface at that point varies with time t. And this is useful because if we want to know what the uh, velocity of the water surface is at that point, it's going to be the gradient of this line. And so to calculate that, we have the rate of change of displacement with respect to time at a fixed position, and that will actually give us the velocity as a function of position and, of course, of time. So it'll give us the velocity at any point uh, um, x as a function of time. And again, we want to use this partial derivative to get at that. So now we can see how partial derivatives are going to be useful for waves. How do we actually calculate them? So here we have an expression, and I've kept it simple by keeping it a polynomial. Obviously, for waves, this isn't going to work, but we're going to have some function of x and t. So the question is, is how do we evaluate a partial derivative? So here we have the partial derivative of psi with respect to x, keeping t 
constant. X and T are our two variables. Well, this is the really simple part of partial derivatives. What it means is I just treat T as a constant and I differentiate with respect to X. So when I look at this, if T is a constant, then I'm just going to have 2X uh, T cubed for this term. Here, T is a constant, X is varying, so I'm going to have plus 4 t. Here x is varying, so I'm differentiating with respect to x, so I get 7. Here t is a constant, so that gives me 0. I get no term from here, this just goes away. right? So I get no differential when I'm differentiating this with respect to x. t is a constant, so this term gives me 0. For partial psi by partial t, I do the reverse. I treat t as the variable, and I keep x constant. So this term is going to give me 3x squared t squared. This term here is going to give me 4x because I'm differentiating the t and that goes to 1. The 7x term gives me 0 because that's just a constant and the minus 2t just gives me minus 2. And so that's how we evaluate a partial derivative. It's really simple. You treat the other variables as constant and you just differentiate with respect to the one variable that you have on the bottom of the partial derivative. So now we've introduced the concept of partial derivatives and we've seen how we can calculate these for a function with two or three or even more variables. So our next step is to use these to come up with a differential equation whose solutions will be functions and those functions will describe waves and that's what we'll do in the next video.